probably going to back up a little bit. This is the last of the red shell ruler. By the way, I, I tried to make a sermon this morning, and it, it hasn't gotten that far. So what you're going to hear is what the Lord has got to say. Um, I don't mean to be smart. I'm not trying to be a hero or any of those things. But uh, some of you need to be healed, and you're holding back your own healing. Is what I'm spirit. But uh, this story about the rich young ruler, uh, he said, Master, uh, I've done everything, I've kept all the commandments. <clears throat> and in verse 19, he said, the young man said, all these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And Jesus turned around and said to him, uh, in 21, Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell what thou hast and give to the poor. <coughs> And I shall have treasure in heaven and come to follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I don't know what else he needed, but some of us are missing God because we haven't heard what he's saying to us and perfected it. Um, we've, we've been through the healing scriptures for a while and I've, I've tried to change the second Sunday of the month but the Lord just keeps saying healing, healing and he's saying today I want to heal you. But if you're stopping yourself what God is trying to do to you, then you're like this rich young ruler and you turn away when you heard what God said to you, but you didn't obey it. I've, I've often wondered if he would not have been, have been the replacement apostle if he had followed, followed Christ the way he wanted him to. Because he told him, he, he not only quoted the scriptures to him in front of this, but he told him that uh, give to the poor, and I said, have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Following the Lord is not always easy, it's necessary. Yes, it is. And like the song said a while ago, we don't see him, but we know he's there. And when you've had a chance to get into his word, you know even more that he's there. And uh, the other thing that I had this morning was through faith and patience, you inherit the promise. When, when you put your faith out there and you activate your patience, because faith takes patience the same way love takes faith. You know, and they've, they've got to work together. And if you're bound and determined not to be patient, then you're in pride and you're in arrogance and you're blowing up things instead of healing things. And I'm just telling you what I'm hearing from the Lord. Lord. In Malachi 3, 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you, sons of Jacob, are not consumed. 
for the 12 tribes of Jacob are not going to be consumed because God is watching after them even though they don't want anything to do with it. You know, how much more is God watching after us and attempting to help us straighten out our life than, than these 12 tribes that came through Jacob? Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. I know this is Old Testament. I understand that. This is where I had to go this morning. Okay. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. So if somebody's making a deviation from the Lord and what God is saying, they can tell you, you need to come back to me. You know, it's the same way when, when people have left their first law. Jesus said, return to what you were doing when you had that first love relationship. Return to it. Go back to it. Repent. You know, and, and people want to make fun of repentance or say it's not necessary anymore. But when I had a problem that, that was becoming a habit and it wasn't a good habit, I sat down with the Lord. And I wrote it out, and, and I wrote out the definition of repentance. And I don't have it in front of me right now. I said, Lord, I, I repent of this habit. I repent of this thing that I'm doing. Because the word repentance is for me to change my mind. In order to get out of that situation, i got to change my mind. And, and with God's help, I have changed my mind Amen. and he took the spirits away that had to do with the prior to that repentance. Amen. So without the spirits there anymore and with my repentance and, and knowing what it meant that I had to change my mind. Yes. Yes. See, sometimes you have to change your mind. Mm -hmm. Return unto me and I will return unto you. Well, that's not just a, okay, here I am. You know, and two weeks later you come back again. No, he's talking about return to me. Yeah. Get involved with me. And, and, and let me become God the Father to you. Let me become Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Let me become the Spirit of God yeah. that wants to teach you all things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Well, I'm here, you know. <laughs> Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? You know, and and these, these were priests that he was talking to, and, and they had stopped tithing, they had stopped doing a lot of things, not just the tithe. But then he had to turn around, and in his mercy, he's trying to get them back again. Listen, from the time that Jesus came to the cross, God has never wanted you to fall away from him again. God has never wanted you to stop seeking him. Zechariah, uh, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Therefore say I unto them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me says the Lord of hosts. Uh, the Lord of hosts is the Lord of glory. In, in Psalm 24, when it starts talking about the, the glory of God and, and opening up the gates and opening up the doors, yes. I think those gates and doors are talking about your soul. And, and the Lord wants you to open your gates and open your doors. And let the Lord of hosts come in. You know, he's the one that was backing up David. And, and backing up the, the prophets before David yeah. and after David. <coughs> That's the Lord of hosts. And he's telling you, turn ye unto me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Be not as your fathers, 
So whatever your father did is may not have been right, but that doesn't mean you got to fall into that same trap. Amen. Amen. I know this is talking about forefathers and so forth. But don't don't be like the last king, or or don't be like the last president, or you know, don't be like the the last senator, or whatever. Whoever's giving you a hard time. Don't be like that. You know, be, be not like your fathers under whom the former prophets had, have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doing. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, says the Lord. They didn't hear. They didn't want to hear. What are you not hearing? that we're saying. Mm, what are you not listening to that, that we're saying? Not only me, but what's being published in this church that you're supposed to grab a hold of yeah. and you're not doing that? Yeah. 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 This, is, this has not been easy for me. This has been, this has been difficult. And, and this came up the last time uh, it was 10 or 8, you know, uh, and I was trying to throw it away, and, so <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm saying, you know, God, this is Old Testament, you know, Haggai hey, uh, 2, 6 through 9. But thus says the Lord of hosts, here we are back to the Lord of hosts again, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. You think you're going to make it through that if you're not doing what the Lord wants you to do? I will shake that all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. So whatever those nations desire is going to come. And I will fill the house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. And he's talking about the temple that uh, was, was built for him, probably Solomon's temple. And he's talking about filling that place with his glory. Now we're the temple. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to miss God's glory. I want to be filled with that glory. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm really selfish when it comes to this, you know? God, if you're giving the glory to anybody, I want you to give it to me. See, and he says, I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill the house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Then the next thing he says, and I don't know, we've been here before, you know, and, and we can look at the scripture and we can say, well, we've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Well, you haven't heard what I'm saying today before, because I didn't hear it. <laughs> Amen. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. But that's not an end result. Mm -hmm. The end result is what I have preached to you over and over and over again, that you must walk in the light as he has been walking. If you're going away from the light, you're putting darkness back in your soul. You're putting darkness back in your life. And you're saying, God, I don't need you. I'll just do it my way. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. This week I lost my peace. I've had not, I, I have had no peace in this message. This is not the kind of stuff I like to preach. <laughs> I'd rather tell you how much God loves you and peace be had to you and blah, blah, blah. But if you're walking away from him, he can't do what he wants to do. In other words, I'm feeling what somebody is going through or some of us are going through. And it's not very pleasing. Mm -hmm. Now the last one I have on this one is Malachi chapter 4. Verse 2. As I 
I was studying about the glory last week. This scripture just popped up. Just like that. Just popped up. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I'm, I'm counting it this way. I'm counting it this way. But unto you who fear my name. See, that, see that's a relationship. That's, that's a that's an ongoing lifestyle. I, I fear your name. I, I, I don't want to do anything that's going to hurt you. And, yeah. And, yeah. and I don't want to live in the darkness. I want to live in the light. Mm -hmm. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wounds. And, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm coming that way. I'm yeah. coming that way. I'm coming that way. And what I heard this morning was, I'm already with you that way. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the grace That's knocking it. at the door. That's it. That's it. That's the waiter. That's it. King Herod, and I haven't been here in a long time, but, but King Herod, there were five generations of King Herod. And every generation of Herod heard the grace knocking at the door. Would not accept Christ, would not accept Jesus. All the way down to Paul when he went to Festus and, and Felix and some of those others. That was a, a Herod in there. And he says, Almost now makes me to be a Christian. Paul? Yeah. Oh. Almost. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was grace knocking at the door for the fifth time. Jesus stood before I heard it. That was great, standing at the door knocking, knocking. Herod, yeah. what's it take to get you to change and accept me? Yeah. Yeah. What's it take? What's it take for you to change and move in the power of my spirit? Yeah. Move in the things that I want you into. What's it take? Yeah. How many more times do you have to hear the, the blessings and the scriptures yeah. before you Doing. Some people say, no, I'm, I'm just not going to do anything else until the Lord moves. Well, the Lord's waiting on you to move. He's waiting on you to get that person healed. He's, he's waiting on you to pay somebody else's bills. God told me something I hadn't heard in about 15 years. And he told me about 10 days ago, he said, use what you have, I'll give you more. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. I wish you'd write that down somewhere. Use what you have, I'll give you more. First time when I heard that, I said, wait a minute. And I sat down and I looked it up. I said, you're not telling me to use it necessarily to give it to another ministry. You're not telling me to use it to buy new tires for the car. You know, you, 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 you're just leaving the use part up to me. Mm, and my choices and my will. So that was right after he told me to open the savings account. So some of them started going in the savings. Now we've got to the point where we have to sit down and Linda and I have to talk about it and say, uh, who is this supposed to go to and where is that supposed to go? Sometimes she'll come to me and, and, and say, uh, I think I'm supposed to do this. And if I don't have any stops, I'll tell her, go for it. And, and you know, Mitch and I have gotten the same way after going to Russia that first time in 2000. I've told you about that several times. But uh, there was a young girl there, and he wanted to give her, a 16-year-old wanted to give her a $100 bill. I said, Miss, that's a lot of money to give a 16-year-old. I said, wait till the morning. In the morning, the pastor started sharing about her being the head of the youth department, how they had nine, nine in that family and nobody was working. And Miss looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah, give it to him. He tried to hide it, and 
not let her see it, just put it in her purse that she caught it. But she started weeping and crying. Uh, so, uh, a hundred times 32, that's a lot of people. So she was, she ran home and helped her whole family. So what are we supposed to be doing? Not, not just money. Who, 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 who? Where's the broken relationships that we, that we restore? Where's the people that you fussed at and, and, and you can't go back and say, I'm sorry? These are all things that, are, that could be stopping your relationship. I think some of them I couldn't find. What was there with me, even, even places where I worked when I was 16 years old, 15 years old, what I did for those people, and the way I worked through my, my youth years, you know, and how horrible I was, and my mouth was filthy mouth. But he made me deal with that stuff. Now, if, if you think about it, uh, look over at uh, uh, Luke, Luke, Luke 19, Luke, Luke 21, 19. Can you put that up there for me, please? Luke 21, 19. In your patience, possess she your soul. Now, Jesus wants to do something with your soul. He's constantly working on your soul as well. Ever since you accepted the Lord, Jesus became the shepherd and physician of your soul. And he wants your soul to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Constantly, continuously, so that you can stay in light as he is in light. When you turn and you walk away from that, you're, you're allowing the darkness to come back and take over your solar shell and your body. And how dark is the darkness that is in you? You do that to yourself. And the Lord just has to back off and the Holy Spirit just, you know, it's kind of like, like this, just waiting. And in Luke chapter 30, when he, when, uh, I'm sorry, in Isaiah chapter 30, when he starts looking at uh, the rebellion, and that's what that is. It's rebellion. Uh, I'm just, I'm gonna do this without the Lord. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe you don't say that, but your mind is working that way. How he wants to come with healing in his wings. He wants to come with more of his glory. He wants to come to this temple and, and fortify this temple to the magnificence of who he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And if you stop in that from happening, then there's something in the way, and it's got to do with your soul is real. In your patience, possess you your soul. Now take that, and, and you may have to come back to that one. But go over to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, and look at verse 12. That you do not become sluggish. Maybe you just become a little sluggish. When the oil gets old in your car, as they say, it's sluggish. It's, it's lost all of its ability to uh, reproduce itself. And it's sluggish, and it's, it's lost all, it, it's got too many metal, metal chips falling off of that engine in that oil. And it can't, it's, it's getting where it can't defeat and win the battle in your engine. And it needs to be changed. 
So that sounds almost like an old wine skin, and I think you need a new wine skin. I mean, that, that may be the problem. I don't know. These things are not coming out. I know it's right now, they're just coming out. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. And you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. There's an inheritance waiting on you, and it's dependent on your faith. And we've talked about using our faith and learning how and staying in the scriptures on the faith and let your faith be strong. But then it's going to take some patience to go along with that yeah. faith. And I tell you, 5510 is the answer to that. If, if you go over and look at that, please. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Would, would you go and buy me some bread and give seed to the sower and, and what's the rest of it? And, and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater? Okay, but how did that come about? Well, the rain came down and we don't get much snow so we, we don't pay too much attention to that. And, and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud. So the rain does something, the snow does something, the water does something. It, it comes from heaven. It comes from heaven the same way the word does. It's coming down from heaven. It's coming down to us from heaven. And it, it's, it's making, it's bringing forth a bud. Not the finished product, but a bud. And you get tired, and you get arrogant, and you get full of filth, and you take the lies of the enemy, and, and, and instead of and instead of you getting bringing forth the bud, you bring forth something else that you your high priest can't do anything with. Amen. He's the Lord of Hosts. Amen. He's still backing us up, and he's still helping us. You can't run away from him no matter what you're going through. I'm finding that out. I can't run away from him no matter what my flesh is saying. My brain is, is, is practicing some other things these last few days. And my head has been hurting me. That's not unusual. I keep talking to the Lord about it and I say, what, what's going on? What's going on? But one day I was in here and I was kind of praying in the Holy Spirit and I said, Holy Spirit, take a lot away. Like that, it was all gone. So it's not mine, it's just the body around me is not controlled by God, it's controlled by the enemy. Oh, baby. <laughs> You take the end of this scripture that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's Isaiah 55, 10. And then if you look at 11, he's telling you the same thing about the Word of God. This is the same as my Word is doing in you. It's got to come up in the mud. You can't let impatience destroy what God has started in you. Amen. You, you can't be so prideful Jesus. and religious Jesus. that I don't give a blank about that anymore. I'm just going to turn away from it. It don't work. I've waited long enough. It don't work. I, I've been at it long enough. If God was going to answer me, he would have already answered me. I waited on him for 20 years to start getting us out of debt. 
in three years, and then I had a prayer after 20 years. She had plans, and she got us out of debt in three years. What if I stopped after 19 years? What if, what if you turned away from the Lord and, and you're just stopping? Well, I've been in church. I went to church. I don't, I don't go to church anymore. I just watch it on television. Well, you forsake the Word of God just to watch it on television. The television minister's got his name, got, got his place in my life. The signs when I listen to them. But they don't, they don't, and it's not because I'm in the pulpit. I'm not even going to go there. Go there. Amen. Go there. Go there. God is creating you to do his will. God has not stopped using you to be his temple. God has more magnificence and power and, and, and deliverance work for you to do for his glory. And it's going to take his glory in you to bring about that work. So he's going to arise with healing in his wings. And he's going to, he's going to be like lightning bolts just bam and slapping things. And we're going to be afraid of some of the things he's going to do. But he's going to do them anyway. Because he's shaking the earth. And we're not part of the shaking. We're not going to the shaking. We're going to the results of what the shaking is all about. Can you see why he's trying to pull you back in and pull you closer to him? Because he needs us, and, and you may not like that word, but he needs us to finish his course on the earth. The same way he needed Paul. The same way he needed John to write Revelations. Yes. Not all the other stuff. Just, yes. John, I need you one more time so you can't go home yet. So you just got to live in this cave for a little while. Okay. But God, I wanted this and I wanted that. And, and, and you know what they're advertising on the TV? Uh -huh. yes. He didn't have no TV in the cave. He didn't have a cell phone either, did he? God wants to create in us the fruit of our lips. God wants to bring about the justification of his people through us. There's many that need to be justified. There's many that you have to stand before and say, you're not guilty. You're afraid of all those charges. Yes, 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 hallelujah. Because they don't know it. Yes. They don't know it. And they're still running around in pain. And you're the ones that God is using to set them free. Yes. And that, that's one of the reasons you're going through so much trouble. Mm -hmm. And so many afflictions and so many distresses and so much persecution because Satan's trying to stop you from doing what God has for you to do. So maybe, maybe we get a pain in the side of or maybe the knee just doesn't work right, or, or maybe the ears don't want to talk right, and, and, and maybe my eyes don't want to see anymore, you know. Uh, or maybe my bladder doesn't work right anymore, but God's got those things, and, and there's a part of the healing that He's ready to do because He's released this healing in His wings. And then you think all you're going to do is sit at home and pray. No, you're going to be so busy you won't have time to pray. Amen. Not the way you used to. Mm -hmm. And we want to go back into our old life when God said, no, I need you to come into this new life. Do not. Yes, Lord. Yes. This newness that I have. Yes. Find your road. Find where you're supposed to be going. Stop, stop looking for God to show up in your broken places. Start looking for the Lord to show up to put you in the road where you belong. And if it's not time for the road, 
and, and, and listen, the only way I can do this is to show you. So if I lose my picture, that's okay. But uh, there I went to several years where, where I was like this, and I was hidden. And I kept saying, God, why are you going to let me out of here so the people can find me and I can find them and I can go and do what you have for me to do? And you know the only answer to that? And he keeps giving me on the road. Phil, just keep trusting me. I'm not done with you. You know, our people will say things to us like God is remembering your youth like the eagle. Yeah. But the eagle that's 80 years old doesn't want to fly out there anymore. Hello? Amen. Now, I want you to take something from Acts 10 38. You already, probably already know the scripture. Acts 10 38. And I want you to take this. I got anointed Jesus from Nazareth. Now, we have the anointing from Jesus from Nazareth. So you need to change it. Our God has anointed several waters of Perry, Georgia. Hmm. What's your name? Then the same results that Jesus got, you get when you see it. With the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. There's that, there's that all again. Healing all. Healing all. And what was their affliction? They were oppressed of the devil. So at some point, the miracles that we need in this church have got to come to pass. Yes. And it's going to take faith, and it's taking a lot of patience. Yes. And yes, we're going to keep waiting, but we've got to get past the waiting and, and exercise our ability. And, and that's not with your mouth. Through faith and patience, you inherit what? The promise. How do you make the promise known? By saying it. I didn't, I didn't know this was my message. God's waiting for us to stand up and say it and keep saying it and keep saying it and activate it and put it to work in our own bodies. Like Lorraine said, a while ago, the lady came and she's helping me and my knee is getting better. My knee is getting better. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. My knee is getting better. And himself took my infirmity. He wore my yes. Yes. He's my shepherd and my fisher now. Mm -hmm. His rod and his staff, they have come to comfort me. That the rod is, is working to put me where I need to be and the staff is teaching me things I didn't know. And God is developing his gifts in you if you open up and begin to let them out. A lot of my gifting started when I was home all along. A lot of my gifting started when I was riding the car and go to work in Macon and ride from Warner Robins to Macon about a 30 minute ride. And, and I'd be prophesying to myself and, and saying things, and sometimes they wouldn't make any sense at all. I said, Lord, I don't think that's you. So I'd throw it away, and I'd try again the next day. And sometimes it was the Lord, and sometimes it wasn't the Lord, but nobody was getting upset about it, because nobody was there but me. <laughs> Hello? We don't see prophecy in the church because we don't see prophecy in the home. We don't see prophecy in the church because we don't see plenty of these things practiced in our own life. Mm. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power to win about doing good and healing all who were oppressed with the devil of God was with him. Now the desert beast of the field. It's really an Old Testament. It's in Numbers 33, 55. He says, if you don't cry about the inhabitants of the land, there'll be bricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they'll vex you in the land wherein you dwell. And this beast is a field in this place, and I'm driving out of here today in Jesus Christ's name. But possibly even in your own home. But possibly just been assigned to you. Possibly it's just part of daddy's old relationship. I don't know. Numbers 33, 55 are founded. On to your side and they will harass you in the land wherein you dwell. Now, if somebody can prove to me that that's been taken away in the New Testament, I'll be glad to say so. I'm a little bit hesitant about saying it, but I hadn't thought about that scripture in years. See, sometimes you pick that up when you go to somebody else's house. Oh, sometimes when you go to work, you pick up things. Sometimes when you go to Walmart, well, just I'm not making fun of those stores, but just yeah. you put a name on a store. Yeah. I slept in a, a hotel in, a, in, a, in another city for several years, and it was the sweetest place to stay in. It was peaceful all night long. <clears throat> and then the last time I went there, I had to fight all night long. And I kept finding this thing up and driving it out of my room and said, this is my property for tonight. I paid the rent on this room. You get out of here, the blood of Jesus is over this place. And 20 minutes later, it'd be back again. You know what I found out? They not only had a new manager, they had a new owner. And they were both from a foreign country. And they had pulled some things in there that weren't in there before. Wow. And I told that minister, I said, sorry, but I'm not staying there anymore. Because his demonic forces were working in that whole entire area because he had come in and taken the authority of that place. Many times now when I go someplace in America, I can't do it too much overseas, but I can do it in America. I'll say, uh, who owns that property? Well, there, I don't know, I don't know, random. Uh, no, I don't need to stay there. I'll find something else. When I find good ones, that's where I'll stay. Sometimes motels are run by witches. Oh, that's not what you wanted to hear. <laughs> or a cubby. Uh, well, what am I doing? <laughs> it's good. <clears throat> I want to end with Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, 19, excuse me. <clears throat> I created through your words. <clears throat> I create the fruit of your lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says the Lord. And I will heal him. Make sure you're the one that's near. Give God an opportunity to create the fruit of your lips. Even if, even if it's just you and him sitting in the car or riding in the car to go to the store or something. 
Lord, I want you to create the fruit of my lips. Come on, because that's, that's connected to the fruit of your spirit. See, if you're developing patience, you're also developing the rest of the fruit of the spirit. Because you, you can't have the Holy Spirit in there coordinating patience without perfecting your love and your kindness and all those other things that are there. And he's bringing by his control while he is working on your patience. And if God says, you have to have faith and patience, you better work on it. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. And I'm saying, you take the scriptures on faith, and you take the scriptures on patience, and you learn how to work those together. Amen. Okay? And then, how is, what is your response to people? What is your response to the guy that's cutting in in front of you in the car? Are you, uh, <laughs> you know, giving him a piece of your mind, or, or is it just another idiot driving by you? You know, that you need them and they didn't bother you at all. <coughs> what are you responding to when, when a kid is act up? You know, and, and, you know, Linda had to teach me how to fall in love with kids because I wanted to, all I knew to do was smack them on the butt. You can't do that out here, you guys. You're supposed to be loving these kids. my first response. <laughs> All right, I've, I've pulled out your enough today. Stand up and work on the healing. Let's work on those healings.